everybody, and welcome back to Blue Jays Today, where today, everybody, your boys, we got to talk about the season opener where the Toronto Blue Jays defeated the Tampa Bay Rays, guys. It was an awesome game, probably the most perfect game that you could ask for on opening day without being too perfect. We're going to break down everything that happened in that game, and as well, look at the game ahead today with Chris Bassett on the mound for game two, and as well, some other Blue Jays news. I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog, and uh, yeah, we were actually talking off camera last night and just mm -hmm. saying this game yesterday's game season opener it effectively went as good as you could have hoped yeah. for right yeah. like what was wrong where were the holes I, there really weren't that many at all guys like everything that i wanted to have happen happened mm -hmm. and it just mm -hmm. like it feels <laughs> great just sitting there watching these guys string together runs and then jose burrios come out and even though this guy gives up a solo jack on the first batter that he faces, locks it in, and then proceeds to have an exceptional outing. Just across the board, there was so much stuff to uh, just so much stuff mm -hmm. to like there, and so much stuff to build off of. And and I feel like if you're a Toronto Blue Jays fan right now, like obviously it's one game, we don't want to go crazy, we don't want to overreact. Mm -hmm. But you you went through that whole off season of just disappointment and uh, you know a roller coaster of emotions. Uh, and there were so many people that were down on this team and this offense, especially. And then to come out and to see them do that, it was like, okay, like this is this is not this this is reassuring. Yeah, there were so many good nuggets of good baseball that we saw yesterday. Um, you know, even right here, shouting out G uh, J L Rocco ninety seven. You know, he's talking about even that play with Kevin Biggio and Kirk yeah. when they threw out the runner at second, where he had to you know slide to his left, get it, pick it. You know, tag him on the mm -hmm. back of his calf. Like, even those little plays, and then the next at bat, you know, in the bottom or the top half of the inning, Biggio goes deep. Mm -hmm. Like, those kind of moments are what make that game even more special than it was. And, and we're going to go through all of it, guys. Uh, but yeah, just the overall summary thoughts before we get into details. Mwah. Very good. Thank you, Blue Jays. Chef's Thank kiss. you. Let's talk about Vladimir Guerrero Jr., though, uh, because even though he went one for five, mm -hmm. he annihilated the baseball, folks. 450 feet. Sorry guys, gonna try to figure that out real quick. There we go guys. Yeah, not sure why that happened. There we go. Apologies there. for that yeah. everybody. Uh, just switching over, uh, you know, the uh, the overlay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it does that. But mm -hmm. what we were talking about there guys was Vladimir Guerrero Jr. annihilating a baseball 450 feet. Adam was saying that he thought mm -hmm. maybe it went over 450 feet. Yeah, Vladdy said that. It, Vladdy and Schneider. It, yeah, it was, it was like, I mean, literally they ran out of room in Tropicana Field. Mm -hmm. There just wasn't enough space for it to go further than that. Yeah, you know? literally like he went to the max and that's why <laughs> that had an expecting batting average of literally literally won because it was always going to be a hit. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. goes one for five yesterday. And even though there was outs, you know, in every other one of his at-bats, one thing that I noticed was that every single freaking hit, that, a ball that he hit into play, because he had four balls that were hit into play, mm -hmm. he did strike at once. Mm -hmm. But he had a hard hit baseball yeah. on every single one of those. He was connecting with the baseball. And one of those other ones, the fly out right there, one, that had yeah. an expected batting average of 930. So you could argue that Vladimir Guerrero Jr., even though he had a moonshot yesterday and I think a pretty solid game, he even got unlucky and he was just playing really, really well. Yeah, I love to see that from Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And how did, how exactly did he do that? Well, you know, we were talking to Joe Siddle on the podcast uh, uh, literally a few days ago. And Joe Siddle was talking about, well, vladdy has got to get that timing down, got to get his hands into a loading position. But mm. one thing that he actually didn't mention, and it was Vladimir Guerrero Jr. dropping his hands. And that's something that Mark DeRozan, a former Blue Jay himself, he broke down on MLB Network this morning, looking at how Vladimir Guerrero Jr. got to this baseball. And it was simply, he did not drop his hands. And I think a part of that, when you look at what Joe, or uh, listen to what Joe Siddle was talking about, uh, Vladdy isn't trying to speed up or get to the baseball. He's coming right through the baseball rather than dropping his hands and trying to get under it. I mean, just take a look at this swing. I'm going to mute it here, but just take a look at this swing and tell me this. 
Do you think that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was swinging hard here? Look at that swing. Yeah, it, like, it looks so clean. It's clean. It looks and, effortless. And what's funny enough is Buck Martinez in this home run was saying he doesn't. He has all the power in the world. Yeah. He doesn't need to swing that hard. And this went over apparently 450 feet. Mm -hmm. If Vladimir Guerrero Jr. can trust his hands to get to the baseball, granted that was an off-speed pitch in the middle of the plate. Yeah. You know, just going to say that because the whole thing's been about fastballs. But if he can just trust his hands and not try to rush or speed and get to a ball, He's going to have a lot of success this year. Well, I mean, I feel like we've seen it with Vlad a lot where when this guy takes a massive hack and he does take them, mm -hmm. usually he misses. And and, the, and his eyes come off the baseball and we're swinging out of our ass and, like, we want to go yard. But I think he said it perfectly right there where it's like he just doesn't need to do that. Now, there are mm -hmm. other guys out there. I'm going to pick on IKF right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But it's like if he wants to hit a home run, he's got to get – everything he has to muscle that ball over the fence. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. isn't that guy, right? right like he's right. just got that effortless power. That is part of the the uh you know, I guess God-given yes. talent. That's the talent. Right that there. was just, you know, uh, yeah. built into him, you know. Thank you Vladimir Guerrero Sr. for gifting this kid with this. But but seriously, I mean like the, the swing looked effortless and the fact that every single one of those other balls were hard-hit baseballs that is a great sign because mm -hmm. even though he went one for five, well, on another day, he's going three for five or right, you know, two, right. two for whatever it is, right? Hitting the baseball hard is an incredible sign. And the fact that he was doing it that effortlessly yeah. is just icing on the cake. Yeah, one more thing, one more positive thing before I do want to reveal just something to note for looking out because you got to be realistic too. It is one game. Uh, one more positive thing I want to mention here mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And uh, we were looking at this this morning. Uh, shout out to Mike Petriello. Uh, this is a great sign. He is taking the pitches that he doesn't want to swing at, yeah. and he's swinging at the pitches that he wants to swing at. Middle of the zone. Even though some are outside, you could drive that ball to right field. You see Bo Bichette do it all the time. Uh, this is a great sign that he's being patient, and he's taking hacks at his pitches. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in the past would have swung at this pitch over here, this pitch over here, this pitch over here, mm. maybe one up and in if it's like on two strikes. He would have swung at those, mm -hmm. and he didn't this time. I want to see this continued effort moving forward. Uh, now, the one thing I want to say, and I kind of mentioned it a little bit before, we got to see him attack the fastball. He got the hit off the off a breaking ball. Great. Mm -hmm. I want to see some good hits off the fastball. Yeah, that's always going to be the bread and butter of any good MLB player. And when he was at his best in 2021, this number blew me away. When he was at his best in 2021, he was hitting the fastball. I think the batting average was 385, and he had a positive yeah. run value of 34. Mm -hmm. 34 runs generated off of that one pitch alone. That's that's crazy, guys. Yeah. That's MVP level stuff right yeah. there. Obviously Otani beat him out that year, but like that is MVP level statistics. So you're absolutely right. He's gonna need to do that. Also, if that image is circulating on Twitter, I'll tell you right now, Tampa Bay Rays are seeing that too. And other mm -hmm. people are gonna see that as well. So as he as he comes in with a game plan, he's gotta understand that now they're gonna adjust to him and there's gonna be some other pitches as well. So I'm curious to see how he adjusts when they start avoiding that area and throwing it in other right. other places, right? Will he will he change where that spot is for him, or will he stay where he's at? Well, here's the beautiful thing: um, until they can prove, until they can prove that they can pitch around him perfect, because that's yeah. what you're basically asking. You're asking for people to dot the outside corner, yeah, to you dot need, the you up need and sliders in. that are just clipping the zone, yeah. you know. And until the, that they can prove that they could do that. Vladdy's good. Just continue with this approach. Mm. There's no reason to change it right now until you find four games in a row. Oh, crap. I'm getting dotted up and in every time. Maybe I start to attack that pitch a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think you guys got to stay right here. And if you can stay right there, you're probably going to have a good season. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, right? Like, you're, you're asking pitchers to be perfect because any mistake pitch right here, this shows a – he will, he will go. He mm -hmm. will take it, and he will swing, and he will hit it really hard. And, you know, some of the times it's going to fall for a base hit or mm -hmm. go 450 feet. So, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., incredible sign so far. Looking for a continued emphasis on that approach and on really just annihilating the baseball it, as man. he did so effortlessly. I keep using that word effortlessly because yeah, that's yeah. what it felt like moving forward. Next guy that we got to talk about here. Jose Burrios. Before we get to him, yes. quick shout out to the 150 people who are watching right now, guys. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button. I have it pinned up in the chat right there, but we are going to be live watching tonight's game, Friday's game, 6.30, uh, with all of y'all in an incredible opening day stream. I want that continued excitement, guys. I'm ready to keep going, okay? Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I've not left the hype train yet. I'm on the wagon. Join us. Yeah, bro, I'm ready. I'm ready for it, guys. Uh, now looking at uh, what Jose Barrios did in the game before. Uh, first of all, six innings pitched, only two earned runs. I think he allowed six hits. 
Um, you know, he had some base runners here and there, but he wasn't really having that much damage. I think most of the damage really came from Yandy Diaz yeah, uh, in that game. Bro. Yon, I learned something yesterday, and Yandy Diaz is the <laughs> most slept-on player in the MLB. That is what That was my biggest takeaway. Obviously, we can talk about Guerrero, we can talk about Burrios and the Blue Jays' offense, but my, holy God, this guy is good at baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three for four, he went uh, double, single, home run, fly out. Now, granted, his double wasn't even that hard hit. Oh, oh you yeah. know, that was just fluky. Yeah. Uh, but going over to Jose Barrios, uh, very, very solid outing. I mean, gum coming into this game and even coming into this season, we did expect a sort of next level performance, that next tier performance from Jose Barrios. Not because we're, we're, you know, we want more out of him, but I think he wants more out of himself, mm -hmm. especially going off of last year's game two, getting pulled that early. In this one, only two lefties. That's kind of the story that I've been following with Jose Burris. How is he going to get out these two lefties? Uh, he handled them pretty well in this game. I think uh, Lau got one hit off of him. Mm. But he really didn't incorporate the cutter too much. He tried mm -hmm. it out one time in this game. Change up. That's the one he's going to throw to the lefties as well. He threw it about eight times. Uh, so not that much in terms of his arsenal changing around. What I did really notice in this game in terms of his arsenal is compared to last year, today... He threw his pitches for a higher velocity. Much all higher. Of, yeah. Much higher. All of his pitches sink her up by one mile per hour. 1.2 on the slurve, 0.4 on the fastball, and then 1.5 on the changeup. Is this maybe, this could be a result of having a, a great offseason, maybe a little bit jacked up on opening day. Who knows? But uh, I like you what I'm seeing out of so far from Jose Barrios. It's, it's a pretty simple formula, guys. Like, throw harder and it's harder to hit. <laughs> like that's kind of the, the, that's yeah. the basis, right? And we've seen it time and time again. Last year, Manoa comes in, velocity way down. What happens? He's not where he needs to be. The location's not there. Always a little bit hurt too, and then you know everything falls after that. Typically, when people are throwing harder, it means a few things. One, you're really confident and you're feeling yourself right now and you're yeah. feeling your stuff. And that is where I want Jose Burrios to be is the opening day guy for us, especially with Kevin Gosman, you know, kind of injured right now in the bullpen where it's at. We need you to come out and be this guy. You are potentially the future of this rotation once those older guys, you know, start to decline or start to leave. So that's a great thing right there. Two, it means you're in good shape. It means that you mm -hmm. went to the gym this offseason. You put in the work. You were with the trainers. You're in great shape right now. And three, and most importantly, means that you are healthy. And that is definitely something that we need. This guy is called the machine for a mm -hmm. reason. 32 starts in the last five Four or years. six years, yeah, I yeah. think. Wild stuff right there, guys. We are going to need him to continue to do that, especially with the injuries and especially because the pitching was just so critical yeah. for us last year. Yeah, and in terms of uh, what I saw from Jose Barrios in this outing um yes there was a couple moments when he was missing pretty wild but what i like to see and it's opening day and you can forgive a guy for this what i like to see is um he's able to bounce back like immediately like he's okay it's okay i can forgive him for throwing a couple pitches outside the zone being wild here and there but he was able to bounce back i mean after the homer to yandy diaz what did he do right he struck out the uh two batters in a row dotting it like that slurve was being dotted yeah. on the outside corner and that, for me, is a good sign. Like, I can forgive that Yanni Diaz homer. That was your first batter. He made a little bit of a mistake slider pitch inside to him, and he's kind of sped up for the fastball. So I, I really like to see that from Jose Barrios. I'm, I, I'm feeling confident, man. Like, I know in my early season predictions, I was like, this guy could be, uh, you know, top three Cy Young or whatever mm -hmm, it is. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even joking now. I really do believe that this well, guy could be up there this season. Again, a, you know, very small sample size. Yeah, but, of course, but of course. Good uh, good starting outings, you know. And Everything what I'm seeing so yeah, far, of course. Point. And and something that I noticed as well with him is like there was a lot of fuck you fastballs that he was <laughs> Just throwing there. Middle. But you know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of what Robbie Ray did in his Cy Young year with the Toronto Blue Jays. Like it, it did feel like this guy was pumping it in the zone and attacking the strike zone. And a lot of times, yes, he did issue a couple walks or I think one walk maybe. Yeah. Um, but majority of the time, I felt like we were in favorable counts. We were mm -hmm. in favorable counts, and that's where you want to be. So we weren't getting, we were never getting into major jams. We weren't getting behind. He was always ahead, and he left after six at 91 pitches. So just put that mm -hmm. in perspective, everybody. Like he could have potentially, if it's later in the season, yeah. gone into seven. This would have been, you know, considered an incredible outing if he did that. So just a great start for Jose Burrios altogether. 
Uh, he'll be back on the mound in uh, in four or five days. Mm -hmm. But today we're going to get Chris Bassett, who is also really damn good. Quick shout out to yeah. Nathaniel Reisenberg right there with a five dollar <laughs> dono. We appreciate you, dude. If we could, we put you up on the wall of MVPs. <laughs> we will be doing that though later today again damn. when we are live for the second. Toronto Blue Jays game of the season. Yeah, yo, shout out to Gaming Freak uh, YouTube uh, who donated 20 mm. YouTube memberships yesterday. If you're still here, man, shout out to you. That no, was incredible. The whole chat was buzzing yeah, yesterday, it was crazy. guys. The whole chat was buzzing. It, again, I, I, I just can't get over how phenomenal of a game that was. <laughs> everything that I wanted to have happen actually freaking and, happened. And we won our bets, too. And later in this video, we're going to make some more bets. You know that we got to do that. <laughs> we got to do it, guys. We got to do it. Uh, but before we get to that, we do need to give a massive shout out here, guys, to a couple Blue Jays mm -hmm. Today viewers. Uh, yesterday, uh, we, we got this email. I, I mean, we rarely get emails from you guys. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people send us emails, but typically, like, people Instagram DM us or comment on our videos and stuff. But we got this email. And uh, flash over right now. Yeah. Ryan on the right. Aubrey on the left. What? An elite father-daughter duo. Yes. These guys watch us, listen to us regularly. D Dude. Incredible. And what I, uh, they're repping the Blue Jays Today podcast logo right here, guys. Mm -hmm. If you listen to us, that's the logo we have on our Spotify and our, our Google Podcasts. And, and they're out there in California repping mm -hmm. the Toronto Blue Jays mm -hmm. and Blue Jays Today. So, guys, big shout-out to Ryan and Aubrey. Guys, if you have photos of, of watching us uh, on your TVs or or you have Blue Jays Today merchandise or whatever, send it over. We want to see pictures. We'll flash you guys up on our Blue Jays Today show, which is going to be every Friday, today, and every Monday. Yeah. Uh, so big shout out to you guys. Much love they're, all the way here in Toronto. Yeah, they're from California, okay? Yes, they yes. could have taken the easy route and they been a fan Dodgers. of the Dodgers. They, they could have done that. You know, they went the hard road, but mm -hmm. the right road. And, and they <laughs> chose the Toronto Blue Jays, and they chose Blue Jays today. Now, those those uh, T-shirts that they're wearing right there, those aren't even official. Those aren't even uh, uh, You know, Blue Jays today. Custom made. They, just, they went out and they did that. So I, I truly appreciate that. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, but I do think that we need to send them, uh, you yes. know, some some complimentary yes. merchandise of our own. Yes. Just to, you know, fill out the, uh, I guess, the... The wardrobe for you guys so, absolutely so, uh you know if you guys are listening right now ryan if you're listening to us send me an email again uh g give me your location uh we will mail you some merchandise yeah absolutely shout out again to ryan and aubrey the viewers of the day we gotta we gotta do that segment more often man i, I feel like i want to make that a regular thing on fridays where <laughs> y'all send us your stuff and like your photos, and we'll flash up like Blue Jays Today community. That actually be dope. Just like yeah, I love like that. Blue Jays fans in general, Blue Jays in their natural habitat. Yeah, you know, like people, I would love that. People doing stuff. It could be associated with us. It can uh, you just you know send us stuff. Send us stuff. Yeah, back. we love it, man. <laughs> um, let's move on to today's game, shall we? A lot of you in the chat right now are talking about Bassett. Is Bassett going today? Yes, Bassett is going today, everybody, and he's going to be going up against. Savale, Aaron Savale coming over from the Guardians. Little experimental piece from Aaron Savale. And he wasn't that good, if I believe, when we did our breakdown. He had an ERA when he came over to the Tampa Bay Rays mm -hmm. at the end of last year in the high in the high fives and the fives. So really still experimenting right there. And he's gonna go up against Chris Bassett, who we know is probably the most polished pitcher, one of the most underrated pitchers in all of baseball. What are you looking for in today's game, Nick? Uh, I like our chances is what I'm going to say. Okay, <laughs> yeah. uh, Aaron Savale, career ERA against the Toronto Blue Jays. It's over six. Tell mm -hmm. me, is that good? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so, guys. We've gotten to this guy before. I know that he's a Tampa Bay Ray now, and like they typically just change people around. But let's face it, this is not the Tyler Glasnow or the Shane no. McClanahan or anybody, anything like that, right? This guy is uh, somebody that you can pounce on. And especially with the way that the offense was looking yesterday, just you know being able to string hits together, I feel pretty solid about this. And Chris Bassett, right? Yep. This guy doesn't get enough love. We're talking about underrated players and Yanni Diaz. Chris Bassett, underrated player in the entire MLB. Like This guy has been consistent as all holy hell for years now. I like this matchup a lot. If you would have asked me before the series started, if you can only pick one game that the Toronto Blue Jays win, what's it going to be? Bet your life on it. It would have been this second game with Bassett against Savali. Yeah, I got to agree. And I love the pitching matchup. We know that the uh, bullpens can be utilized a lot. Um, you got the Tampa Bay Rays bullpen. They, they were kind of using their, their le lesser guys. I mean, they did use one guy. 
uh, flashing over here. Mm. Shout out to MLB.com. This is super cool. They got these cool stories. Uh, we got to be using this more often. Mm -hmm. It's showing like the who is pitching in their bullpen, their pitch count, and it looks like they're going to have it collected over time. So it's kind of like their energy bar. If you're, if you're an MLB, the show kind of player, love it. But they still got their good guys. They got Fairbanks, Waggis Pack, Adam, he's pretty good. So they have guys that can still give you a little bit of innings um, uh, out of that bullpen. So this is going to be key. Blue Jays, just like it was before, they got to Eflin. You got to get to Savale today. The Blue Jays against Savale are pretty good. Bichette has a 500 career average against him. Uh, you've got Kiermaier, who's one for one against him. Kirk has a 333. These Blue Jays have seen him before. Like Nick said, we've pounced all over Savale in the past. Um, it's going to be key for the Blue Jays to get out of the gate early, swinging, take that momentum into this game. Well, the game plan from yesterday is still the same game plan, okay? Get length from your starter, mm -hmm. attack their starting pitcher early so you get a lead, and then they have to play their bad bullpen guys against some of our good bullpen guys, right? Because, again, we are playing around the fact that you don't have Romano and you don't have Swanson. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, eventually that's going to come back to bite us. I wouldn't be shocked if before those guys come back, there will be, you know, a blown save here or something like that. Right. I, I could see that in our future. But you're not going to blow saves if you're up by six. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. you know, like that's why you just got to keep – Pumping these guys, and I do think that we're capable. Looking over at our bullpen, guys, we used Tim Mesa yesterday. A little bit of a questionable one right there. I didn't I think that we look. necessarily needed to, but no. either way, he got the job done. You also did spend uh, Nate Pearson and Trevor Richards. So you got Jimmy Garcia, you got Chad Green, you got Wes Parsons. If we get up uh, by a lot, maybe Wes Parsons comes in. Mm -hmm. You do have Mitch White. Uh, <laughs> you got, you got uh, uh, Cabrera there, Henesis Cabrera as well. So those are kind of the guys that we're going to be looking for. I imagine that if we are in a... A close game, tight game. You're gonna see Jimmy. You're gonna see Chad. Oh, yeah, that's maybe, the thing. Yeah, maybe you er, see yeah, er, er, too. Early in the season, you don't really want to have your guys go back to back. It all depends on each individual guy and how mm -hmm. they're feeling. Mm -hmm. We don't. We're not you know privy to that information. We don't know. But typically, you want to have them kind of going every other day to begin the season. You don't want to risk an injury, especially with Swanson and Romano already out. Uh, for me. You saw a situation where we were getting in a bit of a jam in the middle innings, and Garcia was getting warmed up, come, ready to come in if uh, Jose Barrios wasn't able to finish, I think it was the sixth inning. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be the same situation. There's going to be no quote-unquote closer for these Blue Jays. It's going to be, if we are in a jam, if we are facing the middle of the lineup, you're going to see Garcia, you're going to see Green, and uh, we need to get out to a good start because, yeah, I'd rather be spending Parsons or a Mitch White later in the game if we're up by a lot so we can hopefully get these guys all rested mm -hmm. for what will eventually be a little bit harder outings with Kukuchi and maybe Cosman, maybe Bowden Francis on Sunday. Yeah, well, when we first predicted, made our, our predictions for this series, we said we win the first two and we lose the, the last two. And I'm still sticking to that right yeah. now, even though we, we had an incredible game one and everything went proper. I'm still right. sticking to the fact that, yeah, we're going to lose the last two and, and win this one today just because again looking over at that bullpen you know you're thinking to yourself okay well even you know if we spend jimmy and we spend chad today we're also going to need to spend at least one other guy and that's assuming that chris bassett goes six which would be a great outing if he ends up going four or five then we're gonna have to spend multiple guys uh, and then you got Kikuchi tomorrow, and then you got yeah. maybe Kevin Gosman, maybe Bowden Francis. We're not sure yet. So the bullpen management is still a concern, and it is something to look for. Yeah. I mean, I guess the one minor criticism is, again, the fact that Tim Mesa did come out yesterday. I just don't really think that we needed to do that when we were up by six. You couldn't no. put Mitch White or somebody else in that situation. Uh, I mean, John Schneider didn't want to do that. <laughs> maybe it was a matchup thing. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, either way, this is the situation that we're in. I think it was a situation, not to speak for John Schneider, but, you know, screw it, I'll speak for John Schneider. I think he's just like, I just got to win this game. <laughs> you know, I, just, I don't want to put in, like, you know, Mitch White or, or Wes Parsons and then, you know, have them come back. He's just like, I want to lock this down. I want to win game one. It's just like, it's that's, I hear what you're saying, but it's weird, though, because... Yeah. Like, I feel like he was on the trajectory to do that by playing Trevor Richards and by playing Nate That's Pearson. That's what I'm saying. You know? And then he kind of switched, switched it up it and he was up. like, oh, you know, our, our best guy, Tim Meza, you're in now. But, I mean, like, Nate Pearson, in my opinion, is kind of of the same caliber as a Wes Parsons or a Hennessy right. Cabrera or right. one of those guys. So, right, right, right. I, I don't really know what he was thinking in that ninth inning. Again, I'm not going to complain too much because we won 8-2 to two at the drop, yeah. and it all worked out, and none of the bullpen yeah. gave up earned runs. So At the end of the season, if we win 90 games, we'll never be thinking back to this one decision that John Schneider made. Yeah, yeah That's my one criticism, yeah. but I'm always, I'm always going to be criticizing John Schneider's uh, bullpen management. I've never 
I never liked it. No, yeah, never me either, it. dude. Well, let's talk a little bit about that bullpen mm -hmm. uh, and the injuries associated with it. Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson, as you guys know, not going to be with the team. Yesterday, it came out that they were put on the 15-day IL. Uh, kind of surprised. I thought it would be a 10-day thing, but it's going to be a 15-day mm -hmm. IL. Now, if you do the math, because it started on March 25th, yeah. even though they released it yesterday, it, it you know was retroactive and started on March 25th. So if you do the math, that means April 9th is when these guys mm -hmm. are eligible to come back. I'm hoping that they're going to be really healthy by that point. That should give them enough time. And that also means that we will probably be seeing them in the home opener. Potentially. That's got to be the best. Maybe. That's got to be the best situation. We get those guys back for that Seattle series at the Rogers Center. That would be absolutely amazing. Like, I think that's April 11th, right? April 10th or April 11th? April 10th, April 11th. One Something of those, like one of those mm -hmm. two. Yeah. My brain. I can't really remember things right now. But... Um, Speaking of uh, uh, these guys and, 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 you know, they're working themselves back into a, a full, you know, length, like stretched out kind of role in that bullpen. Um, they're not going to be thrown off the mound until next week, like mm -hmm. middle of next week. So, you know, if you look at, if you're looking at that kind of return, that gives you about a week to, to really ramp up to game speed, mm -hmm. which will be tough if the first time you're taking them out is next week. Could be positive. I mean, we, we didn't expect Kevin Gosman to be this quick nope. coming back. Maybe they're coming back. Maybe the, all that extra rest really did help them out. We'll see what happens. That's something we got to table and like check out a little bit later. Well, even if we could get one of them, right? Even, even one. If we could get one. Of them, it's just it is the loss of having both of literally your two best guys in that pen. Like that is kind of a blow. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, like you know, prayers up to those guys. Please become healthy as fast as possible because uh, they're gonna weather the storm. And they looked incredible yesterday. But it all started with that six inning outing from Jose Burrios. And if mm -hmm. you don't get that from somebody that's when I think you're going to start to, to worry and you're going to start to see the, the negative effects of not having these Yeah, guys. I agree. A quick shout-out to Three Point James for the $2 Super Chat saying Chad Green for a whole season will be huge. I hope so. <laughs> I agree. I hope so, yeah. I mean, we got to see what kind of version of Chad Green we're going to get coming back from Tommy John mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Didn't look exactly good. Very small sample size. But I'm hoping for a full season we can see a little bit of what he did in New York. I completely agree, dude. Yeah, because, again, like, I've just been kind of counting him as a non-factor. Me too. But, Me like, too. he should be a big factor. So, yeah. hopefully, he looks like he did in the days of old. Let's talk about a little bit of a roster move right here. Mm -hmm. This one was a kind of surprising, guys. Uh, Yosfer Zuleta. Mm -hmm. One of the once a top prospect yeah. for the Toronto Blue Jays. Third-ranked prospect for the team. He's gone. And, uh, and he was claimed, by the way. He was claimed. Yeah, by the uh, Reds. So, so he's just gone now forever <laughs> um, for nothing. Uh, I was kind of shocked that they did this, man. I thought it was going to be somebody else, but I guess that they just the, – the Zuleta experiment was uh, was done and dusted for them. Yeah, like uh, you would have thought, give him a shot. You never even got his debut with the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. And uh, why Wes Parsons? Give this guy a shot, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess they just straight up didn't like his command. That was the big issue. And you look over here, the numbers aren't – promising you no. look at this guy and he's not promising he, he was trying to pitch in a starting role didn't work out in the pen a little bit better but still not great so you know you didn't really find a place for him I guess they just they were kind of done and, and obviously there could be other you know reasons why they DFA this guy maybe it just didn't click well with the team with the organization maybe they maybe he wanted to be released I don't know maybe he wanted the new change of scenery mm -hmm. who knew who knew but by Zuleta, I was hoping we maybe see you in a pen role, but I guess not, dude. Uh, what that means is the reason why we did it is Brian Servan, obviously Danny Burgers, has made the team. Uh, and I guess, you know, we'll try it out. And look, the 40-man roster is already getting pretty full as it is. So DFA, dudes, you got to start cutting guys that you maybe had hope for. Got to start cutting them because if you want to make some additions down the line, you're going to have to cut guys anyway. So right, you feel like you got to be expendable on some of these guys that are borderline. Yeah, exactly, right? I, I was watching Moneyball the other day, and, I mean, one, one important sticking oh, point in that was just the fact that, like, at the end of the day, like, yes, these are human beings, but, like, you know, <laughs> you're, you're kind of playing a, you're playing a game right here, you know, and, uh, and you got to have the best 40 guys available. <laughs> they just felt that Zuleta was not got that guy for them anymore. No. And, uh, and I do think it is kind of indicative uh, or shows that there was still value there because the Reds literally picked him up immediately. Oh, yeah. Like, it was, like, you know, within 30 minutes. Like, this guy was, like, boom on another team. Uh, so, I think yeah. that that's kind of interesting I mean, to note. Um, there's but, a reason why he's a top three. He was a top three prospect, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and so. maybe they saw something in him. It's like Tampa Bay Rays. Like, they must see some guys in some other organizations, and they pick him up that, the, the, you know, the organizations don't value. Like Moneyball. Right. <laughs> you know well, I'll tell you right now, dude. If Danny Burgers comes out and annihilates one 450 feet like Guerrero did, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be thinking about this anymore at all. Not at all, guys. Uh, real quick, I guess now we'll move on to the next segment, guys. Uh, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's Blue Jays Today show. 
Whoa, time for your daily Betway breather. A quick reminder that the best place to bet is on Betway. Must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Betway, everybody. They're absolutely phenomenal. We are going to be watching the game along with y'all later this evening, mm -hmm. 6.30. We're going to be live. It's going to be awesome. We need something to cheer for other than just the Toronto Blue Jays because yeah. we're degenerates. <laughs> uh, and therefore, we are going to make some bets with you guys yeah. right now. So I, I, I know that you got one. Yeah. I got one as well. Explain your reasoning behind what you're betting on. Yeah, so uh, again, shout out to Betway because uh, we're going to be going off of their platform right here. Um, I, I'm riding with Bo Bichette and Alejandro Kirk to record one base. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the show, Bo Bichette is three for six off Savali, so that feels like a pretty good lock. Mm -hmm, Bo Bichette, mm -hmm. best hitter on Blue Jays. You can count him for a hit almost every day. And then Alejandro Kirk, man, he looked good. He looked good. He drove in the RB, uh, two RBI single. He's one for three, I believe, off Savale. Yeah. And that's probably the one that I'm most worried about. But if you take a look at Betway's lines here, the multiplier is 2.10. So it feels like good odds. So if you bet $10, you'll get $21 back. Mm -hmm. And that feels like a really solid line. And looking at other sports books, that's going to be your best line. So if I'm going to rock with that, yeah, it's a little bit risky. When you go doubling your money, it's a little bit risky. But I like that I'm getting a little bit extra. So, yeah, Bichette. Kirk, I know you love that. I know you love the Kirk. Yeah, of course, dude. And again, like we haven't really touched on Alejandro Kirk, but I, I really liked what I was seeing out of him. I Me thought too. that the at-bats were extremely solid yesterday. You even said at one point when he took a slider on two strikes <laughs> down low, you were like, that's my guy. I know I did. I know I did. And, and you know, thinking back on it, like, yeah, like you, you, you're supposed to take that. Yeah, yeah. But um, not a lot of guys do. But, you know, he just, he looked calm and and he wasn't forcing the game. And we were talking to Joe Siddle again. We keep shouting out this podcast because like it was so, just so insightful. Um, but he was talking about Alejandro Kirk and saying the last year he was forcing the game a lot and, and he wasn't letting it come to him. And a big reason Whoa, for that was... Whoa, time for your oh, daily bet wave breather. A quick... That's about way again. <laughs> uh, you know, a big reason for that was the fact that he didn't start with the team in spring training and it just felt like he was behind a lot of the time. And he just, he, he, he had to start cheating. And, and when yeah, you start cheating, yeah. that's when you start losing and the pitchers get ahead of you and all that stuff. Yesterday... There was no cheating involved. Like, this no. guy looked, like, so calm and collected. He took a walk. He got a big hit in a big moment. That's what you want to see out of him batting six. I tweeted this out mm -hmm. in response to the Toronto Blue Jays when they released the lineup card. Kind of joking, but at the same point, kind of true. I said, Kirk batting sixth is what championships are made of. Folks. Yeah, yeah. Kirk batting sixth is what championships are made of. The guy came up clutch, so I do like that a lot. Moving over to my Betway uh, bet that I'm riding with, guys. I'm saying that uh, the Toronto Blue Jays are going to have the highest score, uh, highest scoring inning mm. of the game. Yesterday, I like it. if I would have rode with this, I would have won. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, you can also draw, which would suck. I don't want, I don't want that to have happen. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking that the Blue Jays, the way that they were looking yesterday, and I said this, and I know it's an overreaction, but I said it, it's reminding me of the offense that we used to see in 2021 when we're stringing stuff together mm -hmm. and when we're when we're letting the game come to us and obviously you love to see what what Guerrero was doing hitting the ball hard and, and Bichette just being Bichette all across the board I felt really good about it and because we've annihilated Aaron Savali this feels this feels nice yeah I feel like uh we kind of glazed over it but I we gotta really shout out the fact that yesterday literally everybody he's talking about stringing hits together there was a lot of stringing hits together especially I believe it was the was it the sixth inning actually I can I see it it right the, here yeah there, sixth it was inning. sixth inning where we put up a five spot you know everybody like individually had a good game mm -hmm. right one for four one for five with a homer two for four uh Turner the big standouts here are Turner Varsho and uh and uh, IKF, Ty KF yeah, didn't have yeah. a good game, but still, everybody else like hit for power, uh, came up with clutch base hits when you needed to. So, for me, like, yeah, I, I like that bet. It is a multiplier of two point four five, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. It is, it is. So, obviously, a little bit more riskier, but because uh, you know you, know, you can never really know. But I like what you're thinking right here. You got Chris Bassett on the mound, who he's gonna shut down. He's not gonna let up big innings. He's gonna shut down. These Tampa Bay Rays, hopefully, hopefully don't jinx that right there. But I feel a lot better about that, especially with our bullpen being pretty rested as well. Flashback over to the box score from yesterday. Yeah. I just took this in right now, and this is something that, I, you know, kind of an underrated storyline of the day. Right. Seven walks for the yes. Toronto Blue Jays. Yes. Seven walks. I was, I was just bringing up Moneyball. The whole thing about Moneyball <laughs> is getting on base. Get, on, Get base. on base. Get on base. Seven walks for the Jays. You got eight hits. You could yep. win with eight hits, but seven walks. That's, That's big, dude. Really good. That shows that everybody was being patient, letting the ball yeah. come to them. They weren't forcing it. I love to hey, see that. I'll add on to that. Seven walks, 
only seven strikeouts. One for one yeah. ratio right there. That's a, that is a good ball player. If you can go one for one, again, small sample size, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we got to keep, well, these are the narratives. We're trying to paint you the narratives so we can continue to see these throughout the season. You know the Blue Jays are back. And look over at the Tampa Bay Rays. Two walks, Ooh, 11. 11 strikeouts. Wah, wah, Not great. Wah. Not great, guys. And he, they weren't seeing the baseball. Here's another thing I noticed. Uh, look at this middle part of the lineup not coming up at all. You got Yanni Diaz setting the table mm -hmm. and then just nothing. Yeah. And then just nothing. No, Yanni Diaz did everything for them. Yeah, Johnny Diaz did literally everything for yeah. them yesterday. And if they did not have that guy, like, it, it might have been 8 nothing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, guys, I'm feeling good about it. Again, we will be live later today mm -hmm. watching the game with all of you. Uh, until then, folks, comment your thoughts about all of this down below. Uh, also, go follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We're posting yeah. a bunch of stuff on there very recently, kind of some breakdowns about the Toronto Blue Jays opening day uh, game and then just this series as a whole. So I hope to see you guys there. Yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We had almost 200 people. We had actually 200 people right at the end here uh, watching this live stream. If you haven't, guys, already, make sure to hit the like button and support the boys. Hit the subscribe button so you can get notified as well when the boys are going live. And like Nick said, we'll see you all at 6.30 tonight. Mm -hmm. And shout out to the Ooh. elite father-daughter duo. Yes. Aubrey, we're here for you. Merch in the mail. Let's go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, Go Chase, go! go.